Hello and welcome to Neighborhood Church. Thanks for joining us in person, online, and in the parking lot in the foyer still. So always great to have you with us today. Um, we're excited to worship together and lift up the name of Jesus. As we start, just a question to think about in person or also if you're watching online. Uh, something to think about what or who is something that has encouraged you lately? What or who is something that has encouraged you lately? I don't know if that's proper grammar, but we're going to go with it. Uh, for me, on, fr on Thursday and Friday, uh, the staff and I had the opportunity to attend the Global Leadership Summit. It's something we do every year. We did it right here. We had some friends with us here, too. And I was encouraged in many ways in my leadership and also in learning and growing together in community. And there's many things that I, I still have to process and take away, but that's something that has encouraged me. So as we begin to worship today uh, together, would you pray with me? Father God, we are so grateful for being able to gather together, and we pray for a divine work of your Spirit in and through our lives. May we hear from you, may we respond to you, and God, we look to you. So we offer this time and space to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, I just invite you to stand as we worship the name of Jesus. Isn't 
We sing holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are you and know. fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me.
you pray with me, please? God, I remember being a kid and thinking about you and all of your power. I think about that even as an adult. And as, if we, as we have sung, open up my eyes and wonder, I don't want to sing that with some sort of lazy attitude, God. Bring me back to those places where you have shown me, even in my childhood, not all of us have that experience being children and experiencing you, but all of us to some degree have been new to the faith and where everything was wondrous and everything was really you were powerful and how time can turn that dial down and we tend to forget. So when we sing, open up my eyes and wander, help us to believe the words that we're singing. And give us the faith that we lack sometimes to actually see you as wonderful and powerful. We thank you, God, that we can live and move and have our being you in you in this moment. That we can receive power and vision from you. We thank you for all of these gifts, God, and we just receive them humbly. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Church, you may be seated. Well, welcome, Neighborhood Church. Thanks for joining us online and in person. Thank you, Jason and Jenna, for leading us in worship today. Uh, please, just a reminder to be praying for uh, the Neely. Sorry, Crab, my daughter. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> dad moment. There you go. Hey, hey, take that proud dad moment. <laughs> Please be praying for the Neely family. Melanie's mom passed away this, this last Monday, um, so please be praying for them. Also be play, praying for Amia Das. Uh, he lost his brother this last week, too. Um, so please be praying for the many things and concerns around us. Also, today we want to welcome a new member uh, to Neighborhood Church, so come on up, Erica. Erica has been interning with us over the summer, but also she went through the membership process, so we want to welcome her into membership today. Before you clap for that, just want to remind you that here at Neighborhood Church, we look at membership as a partnership with you in the church, that you're saying, you know, God has positioned us here, this is our church, this is the vision that God is calling us to be a part of. So it's not a passive thing, it's an active thing. It's getting involved as being a part of what God is doing here. And Erica has truly demonstrated that already. So uh, let's welcome her into membership. So, and she's going to be doing uh, the welcome here. So I'll just hand off the mic to her. Thank you. Um, good morning, Neighborhood Church. Uh, here at Neighborhood Church, we are transformed by Jesus, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and launched on mission. Um, I want to invite you guys to fill out a Connect card. They are found at the uh, seat in front of you, um, on the seat back also as well, I suppose. You can drop them off at the end of the service here, but you can also find them online. Linnea will drop a link to that in the chat. Um, and if you are new here or this is your first time filling out a Connect card and you live locally, we would love to email you a little gift for filling that out and saying thank you. Uh, we also want to encourage you guys to follow us on social media. You will be able to see all our platforms there, and we would love to connect with you in that way. We are so happy that some neighborhood kids are joining us today as well. So the room off the foyer, the cafe that is available for you guys if you need somewhere to take your kids throughout the service. Um, but also, starting next week will be the soft launch of our next phase of neighborhood kids, where basically parents, you can come and check your kids in in the foyer and then bring them in during the service for music. And then after the music is over, you can bring them out and they will go to the first floor where they will be divided into two age groups. And um, you can pick them up down there as well. For the, and they'll stay there for the remainder of the service. Uh, and I ask that you continue to pray with us as we look for a new director of uh, Neighborhood Kids. We also have an August social coming up. This is on August 15th. It's from 4 to 7 at Lake Kneewood, and you can find other details about that as well as RSVP on our website. 
On August 22nd, we have a baptism service coming up. So if you have said yes to Jesus and you're looking to take the next step towards believer baptism, we would love to encourage you and talk to you about that. Um, you can indicate your interest on the Connect Cord or you can indicate it on um, our website. Also on August 22nd, the staff is hosting a lunch for those of you who are new. Um, we're calling it Meet the Staff and you can register on our website anytime throughout the 20th. Um, and we are also looking for volunteers. So all of you guys are gifted in some way, and we would love to encourage you to use those gifts to advance God's kingdom. Um, as Pastor Mark was saying, you want to get involved in your church in many different ways, um, past just attendance on Sundays, so we would love to encourage you guys in that. Um, and we just ask that you continue to pray for ways that you could potentially serve or ways that you feel called to serve. Some specific areas that we are looking for are the director of neighborhood kids, the connections team leader, small group leaders, a bass player, a male singer, as well as other musicians, youth leaders, a live stream host, a follow-up team, and kid ministry volunteers. So again, just continue to pray if any of those areas you're feeling called to serve in. Uh, and you can indicate this again on your connect card or on the website. We also wanna thank you guys for all the ways that you've been financially giving this season. Um, and we want to remind you guys that um, when you give directly to the missions fund, you're supporting people like Bruce Persons. Um, Bruce Persons and his wife and their eight month year old baby just moved into their new home. Uh, he is the pastor of Table Church in Frederick. And he also, uh, runs the Bison Christian Fellowship at Gallaudet University. Table Church is having the ASL family camp August 12th through 14th, and so I just want to invite you guys to pray that that goes well for them, as well as um, the classes at Gallaudet University start August 30th, and just pray for Bruce, Bruce Persons, sorry, <laughs> pray for Bruce Persons as he clearly is a very busy man and just pray for the effectiveness of his ministry as well as relationship building and relationship maintaining as well. Now I invite you guys to bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity for all of us to have gathered here together. Um, I pray that this would be just a great time of worship and a great time of connecting with you, Lord. Um, I pray that you would meet all of us individually, whether we don't know you or just know you and would like to know you better, Lord. Um, I pray that you would connect with us in that way. And I also lift up Bruce Persons and his family and all the things that he has going on. I pray for the effectiveness of his ministry and that you would meet him and his family and his congregation um, in the same way that I pray that you would meet us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Erica. Great job. But we're all about developing people and apprenticing people and allow, allowing them to get involved in ministry. So uh, great to see her step up and do many different things. She's been doing a lot of things over the summer. Now today we have a guest with us, um, a friend of mine, uh, Pastor Tony Cyrus from Interdenominational Church of God, right down the road here. He spoke before, uh, but I invite him back again, and so we're privileged to have him speak to us this morning. So please welcome Tony. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you all. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here uh, to worship with you all and uh, serve today. I was going to come up here and say, you know, I just happened to be in the hood and I was going to stop by. <laughs> <laughs> but Pastor Mark took my punchline. He did invite me here. <laughs> but I'm truly an honor to, to be here today, uh, Pastor Mark and the rest of the team here for the privilege and trust to be able uh, to share the word of God with you today. I pray that God is keeping you um, during this time. Um, I'm privileged to be here during uh, your sermon series, uh, Position for Purpose, out of the book of Daniel. Um, and so I've been able to watch Mark uh, and those who other who've been sharing online, and I've been encouraged by it. Uh, I'm not coming from the book of Daniel today. Uh, we'll get a, a slight break from that, but still connected to this thing called Position for Purpose. Um, I think it's just so important that we remember that as individual believers and people, we have a purpose. Um, we are still here because God has us for here for a reason. And so I just want you to be encouraged with that today, but also collectively that the church still has a great purpose. 
Um, often in society, we think that the church is irrelevant and people are progressing, as we call it, and moving further along. But the church still has great purpose uh, in the earth realm. Um, it's been a tough year and a half for, for many. Um, maybe some of us haven't been hit as hard, maybe, but for some people, it's been a really, really difficult time. Uh, job loss, you know, we've had uh, people lose their jobs and um, had people lose loved ones during a pandemic. And as a pastor, having to serve a family who's lost a loved one during the pandemic where people can't come and, and things like that, it's been difficult. Some of us have had school challenges. I don't know if I've had anybody in here that their children may have had some challenges at school. The whole online thing wasn't working for them or whatever the case may be. We've had a lot of different challenges. The social unrest in, 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 in our nation and we know the political divide that's still raging on. Uh, there's so many things that we could talk about, uh, but the good thing is that God is in control, and he still has a purpose. That's why we're here, and there's a plan for us. But if we're going to fulfill our purpose, uh, both individually and corporately, uh, we have to put our trust in God. Uh, we must continue to trust God. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this time. Uh, this gathering where we can worship your name and hear from you um, and just uh, be together, Lord, uh, online or in person, uh, just connecting with the fact that we're your children, we're saved, and we want to love and serve you. So speak to us through your word. Uh, God, give us the instruction that we need so that we can be the people you've called for us to be. And we thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can go in your Bibles, um, a familiar passage of Scripture to many, but to some, uh, it might not be. It's found in the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs chapter number three, Proverbs chapter number three, and we're going to begin with verse number five, just two verses here. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Amen. Trusting God. The book of Proverbs is really short instructions for us to have an effective life here in the earth. Um, Solomon, who, who wrote most of, of Proverbs, uh, was a wise man. He asked God for wisdom. He didn't ask God for riches when he was king. He didn't ask God for fame. He asked God to give him a wisdom to govern his people. And so during his life, he got wisdom as, as he walked with God and, and, and walked in the earth. And, and he penned a lot of it here in the book of Proverbs. The overarching theme for us is to really that we view God for who he truly is, not the God we want in our own mind, but the God that we view him for who he truly is, and that we learn how to walk with reverence with God. When we learn how to respect God and reverence him for who he is and then walk accordingly, live our lives accordingly, then we're walking according to something called wisdom. Uh, that's what wisdom is ultimately all about. But a sub-theme here that we want to talk today is about trust, this thing called trust. And we want to define trust simply as this. It's a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. I'll say that again. A, a, a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. That's uh, strong for us because it's a firm belief in their reliability, trust, ability. So when I got married over 23 years ago, to my beautiful wife, she's not able to be with me today. Something hit me like a ton of bricks, that we had enough trust to get married, but that was about it. <laughs> it didn't take me real long to figure out that this woman, did, this woman did not trust me further than the fact that she said I'd do at the altar. That was about it. There was a work in progress that we had. If we were going to get somewhere, trust had to grow. Trust had to, to develop. Uh, it wasn't all the way there. It was amazing. She said I do for the rest of her life, but she really didn't trust me that far. And I'm not just putting it all on her. I had some trust issues my own self, but you understand what I'm talking about. So it's important for us when we deal with God that, our, that we realize that our trust with God has to continue to develop as well. It's not that I was saved in 1977, and then therefore I have all the trust that I ever need. We must continue to grow in our trust with 
God. But my major point today I want to make, and I'll please get this if you're taking notes, is that God can be trusted. God can be trusted. See, one of the things God does is he's separate from us as man. You know, we have some what we call communicable attributes, stuff that we get from our father. Like, let's say good. We can do good things. Okay? We're not good like God is good, but we got a communicable attribute from him that we can do good things. Mercy is another communicable attribute. You know, we can be merciful to other people because we get that from our father. He's all merciful, not us, but we do have mercy within us. We get that from him. He's, he's our father. But there's some attributes about God that we don't get from him that's unique, that separates him from us. The first one I want to uh, talk about here is that God is omnipresent. Okay? You've probably heard this before, and nothing new today, but just reminding us because we can trust God because he's omnipresent. That means God is everywhere. Psalms 139 and 8 says this, if I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. I I want us to be encouraged by this because it doesn't matter where we're at, what situation we find ourselves in, whether things are going great or whether things are going horribly. No matter where we are, hospital room, prison cell, in the church, in home feeling alone, at school feeling isolated. It doesn't matter where we are. It may be a good thing or a bad thing. God is present. He's there. There's no situation that we walk through that God is not with us. He's present. He's everywhere. I want you to be encouraged by that today. And we can trust God because he is everywhere. We cannot escape his presence. We cannot escape who he is. No matter how I'm feeling, no matter what emotions I'm having right now, even in this moment, God is right there. God is omnipresent. We can trust God because he's omnipresent. Number two, we can trust God because he's omnipotent. That means God has all powerful, all power. He's all powerful. In Matthew chapter 19, Jesus was talking with his disciples, and he said that it's harder for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for the rich man to get into to the kingdom of God. And so the disciples were like, well, Jesus, if that's your standard, then how is this even possible? But he goes in verse 26, he says, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. How many realize today that with God, all things are possible? The other passage of scripture says, there's nothing too hard for our God. I love looking at the Old Testament scriptures where they say when God, when he would reach his hand to do something, who can pull God's hands back from doing whatever God wants to do? Who can stop God from doing whatever he wants to do? Nobody. God can do all things. The psalmist in Psalm 68, 10 says, God has spoken once and twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. That's good news for somebody because no matter what we're facing, God is able No matter how difficult the situation may be, God is able. Our shoulders may seem small and puny. Some of us, mine, I'll talk for myself, that that we can't handle. (laughs) Some of y'all may be buff, been in the gym five days a week, not this brother. If I get in there once, I'm good. But you know what I'm talking about. Life will put some stuff on us that we feel overwhelmed by it. But God is not overwhelmed by any situation. He's not overwhelmed by family drama. He's not overwhelmed by health issues. He's not overwhelmed by career issues. He's not overwhelmed by anything because there's nothing too hard for our God. We can trust him because he's all powerful. Number three, God is omniscient. That means God is all knowing. He's a know-it-all. Psalms 147 and 5 says this, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. This is, this is a beautiful thing because we're limited in our knowing. God knows everything. He knows the hair on our head or lack thereof. He knows the follicles. <laughs> Even though you can't see it, he knows it's there. <laughs> he knows He knows what you're thinking right now. He knows what your business partner or the people you may be getting into a venture with, he knows what they're thinking. He knows that relationship when you swipe left or right, whichever way you swipe it, on your app. Come on, I know I got some dating app people in here. Don't look all sanctified today. (laughs) 
<laughs> Y'all check it out to see who's available. Single people, only single people. Right? He knows the person you're having dinner with. He knows them. He knows what their thoughts are. He knows what their intentions are. He knows everything. And so we can trust God because not only is he everywhere, not only is he all-powerful, but he's all-knowing. He knows everything. We can trust God. And many of us, we get hung up because we have trust issues because of what people have done. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? We can't always trust people. Folk, folk will let you down. Can I get a witness in here? People will fail you. People who will love you will fail you. People who want to do right will still fail you. But God never fails because he's different than us. This is something unique that we're not everywhere at the same time. I can't be there for you. Sometimes we have loved ones who pass away. We want to be there, but we can't. But God is always there. Sometimes we want to help people, but I don't have the strength to help you. I, I'm tired of my own body. I've got, I've got my own life. I've got my own issues. Sometimes I don't even have enough money to even throw at a situation. Sometimes I feel like doing that. I just want to be able to solve a problem with money, but we, we run out of resources. But God is all powerful, and God knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning. And so we don't have to put God in the same box where we put people. God is outside of people. He, he can be trusted. We can trust God with our lives. That's good news for me. I'm encouraging myself today because God can be trusted. He says, trust in the Lord. But he doesn't just stop there. He says, with all your heart. All of it. Somebody say all. All, all your heart. All of it. All of it. Our heart here being the ruling center of our will our minds, and our feelings. The ruling center of our will, our minds, and our feelings. Proverbs 4 and 3, 23 says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. So God, he, he tells us we, we, com, we uh, cover our heart and we keep our heart, but he wants to, us to give our whole heart to him, all of it. Told you my marriage, been married for 23 years, and we had enough trust to start. But I realized that if I was going to own a home, if I was going to be a father, if I wanted to accumulate certain things in the earth realm, that our level of trust we had in each other had to change. It had to grow. Because I had to trust her, and she had to trust me. She had to trust me to be a, a husband to her. She had to trust me to be a father to children. I had to trust her to be the mother of my children. I had to trust her financially. She could have robbed me blind. I had, to, I had to trust her. You laugh, it happens. <laughs> I had to trust her. Not with some of it. And I realized that the half stuff that we have right now isn't good enough. And sometimes that's a hard thing for us to deal with, but what we're dealing with ain't good enough yet. And I know that's bad English, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it anyway. We need more. And, and for us, many times we think that we've been trusting God because I got saved in 1988. But we still got to continue to build our trust because you can only go as far as your trust will take you. You can only go as far as your trust will take you. If the trust is not there, you can't go any farther than that. You need that trust as a foundation. And God has a purpose for many of us that he's trying to take us to greater levels and deep, deeper depths of what he wants to do in and through us and use us in a mighty way. But we've got to trust him. When God wants to make moves in our lives, we have to have full trust with all of our heart. I mean, this is Satan's ploy. So Satan's thing is, my job is to keep you from trusting God. That's what he's always done from the very beginning. Even when you go to Genesis chapter 3, and you look at the issue in the garden with Adam and Eve, what did he do? He gave them the, the lust of the, of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Did God, did God tell you not to do that? Oh, come on. You know God just trying to keep you from something. Trust yourself. Satisfy your own self. Meet your own needs. Don't worry about what God has to say. He's just being difficult. He's being challenging. He don't want you to be great like he is. He's trying to keep, and this is what the enemy does with us. So we trust our own selves. Come on, can I get a witness? We trust our own selves. We see it. It looks good for me. Got to have her. Got to have him. Got to have that corner office. Got to have it. 
And so we do things ourselves and, and we operate in a spirit of pride because we think that we're doing it. But he wants us to trust him with all of our hearts. Trust God with everything, all of our heart. It's not us. And if God is telling us to do something, we've got to do it. All of our heart. I know that's a challenge for me because sometimes we say, I believe God. It's like in Mark chapter 9, there was a, a man who had a son who was having an issue, and he took the son to, to the disciples, Jesus' disciples, and they couldn't solve the issue. Again, people will fail. People, people well-meaning people will fail. And he, Jesus said, bring him to me. And Jesus asked the man, he says, do you believe that I can do this? And the guy says, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. You see that? Our, our initial response is, yeah, I believe. I believe God. Help my unbelief. And I just want to minister to some of us today. Some of us are in that same position. We believe God for certain things, but we don't believe God for everything. Oftentimes, we believe God for church stuff, but do I believe God with my marriage? When things aren't going well, do I, do I believe God with this relationship? Do I trust God can work through me and my spouse that we can get this resolved? Do I really trust God with that? Some of us, we, we, we believe God for certain things, but we don't believe God for our money. You don't got to raise your hand. I know it's true. <laughs> we trust God and everything will come and we'll sing worship songs and well, I will build my life, right? Don't ask me how I have no money. <laughs> don't, don't touch my wallet. Don't touch my bank account because I trust myself with this. We don't trust God in areas. We don't trust God to provide for us. So we think we got to hustle. We work at 80, 90 hours a week. We got we to do all this stuff. But we don't put our trust in the Lord in these areas. Some of us don't trust God with our careers. We don't trust him with it. So we think we've got to do everything. But God is saying, no, trust me with everything. The little things, the parenting, trust me with it. The finances, your, your, your money, trust me with it. Your marriage, your relationships, trust me with it. Your singleness, trust me with it. Your past issues, trust me with it. The brokenness, Trust me with it. The abuse, trust me with it. Trust me with your, all your heart, not some of it. God doesn't want to be three, in three fours of our lives. He wants to be in all of it. It's an open door. I, I learned that when I was getting married, when I got married. My wife wanted everything. She wanted to be in everything. She wanted to be in every room of the house. <laughs> she, wanted to be, she wanted to be in everything. Because she was in, and that's how God is with us. He, he's not Lord of our lives to be Lord over, over some. He wants to be Lord over all. And he wants our heart to be open wide to him. And Proverbs tells us, trust him with all of our heart. So how do we know if we're trusting God? Well, trust is demonstrated through obedience. We know that we're trusting God when we obey him. <laughs> I know you got mask on, gonna be quiet today, but let, let's, let's laugh a little bit. Let's deal with this thing. We trust God when we, when we are obeying him. I told the story before, but you know, when, when I got married, I'm going back, because this is just this example that we can really relate to. You know, we were young and struggling when I got married. My wife was in school full time, I was working. So I would say, listen, sweetie, you got $150 to get groceries. She would go to the grocery store, $300. <laughs> but we got to have this, and we got to have this. Sweetie, we'll get paid next week. <laughs> Today, <laughs> $150. Again, it's, it's trust. And, here, and, and, and here's where I'm going is that we had to grow in this thing. And then now, if I say, sweetie, $150, it's $150. Because before, she wasn't listening to me. Don't tell her. I mean, you know she's going to watch it. <laughs> but you see, as you grow, we start to obey. And that, that's how we are with God, that when God says to do something, God says, go to that person and ask for forgiveness. You don't know how they're going to respond. But that's not the point. If God is leading you to do that, that's what he tells you to do. Trust him and obey him and watch what happens. That's how we know we're trusting God, when we're willing to do whatever he says do. So it's pray for somebody, trust him. 
It says, show up when even you know people don't want you there. Trust him. That's trust. It's pray for your wife even when you know she's pissed at you. Trust. <laughs> Try it sometimes. <laughs> It'll do wonders. <laughs> trust him. This is what he's saying. With all our heart. Then he says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. You know, I was working, before I was full-time pastoring, I was working in industry, and I was considering transitioning to, to ministry, and I had some things in my heart. And I had a new supervisor, and she got to know me a little bit, and she was calling me, and she was really challenging me to do better. And basically, she was saying, I'm paying you a lot of money. I need to get more productivity out of you. That's really what she was saying. And I knew what she was saying, and I understood what she was saying, but I didn't like hearing it. And so out of my mouth, I said, I'm not stupid. Time she was having a conversation with me, and I said it. I, did, I didn't plan to say it, but I said it. <laughs> because within me, I, I, I know, I'm not dumb. I can do this. You know what I'm saying? I know I, what I'm capable of doing. I can produce. I've done it before. That's why I'm getting all this money. I say that to say that we can't lean on our own understanding. And I want us to grasp this today. We have an understanding. Just like I wasn't stupid. Okay? Going back, let's look at Adam. God made Adam. Adam was not stupid. <laughs> right? Oftentimes, we, we give Adam a bozo type of complex that he was just kind of, oh, you want me to eat this? Okay. And then, and then, and then we, we, we get into this world. That's how, sometimes that's how it's presented to us. Adam was made in the image of God. Adam was given dominion over the earth. Adam was able to name the animals and whatever he named it, that's what it was called. Adam was not stupid. Adam had abilities. And you and I, we're the same way. We're not stupid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We have minds. Anybody got a mind that they can use to think? Right? We know how to strategize. Anybody know how to strategize? We know how to plan. We got plans. Pastor Mark was planning. I told, you know, he, he invited me here last year. <laughs> and I just said, okay, even I have no idea what I'm going to be doing in August. And my church would love Mark because I, 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 str I plan. I just don't tell everybody about the plans. That's, that's, my, that's my problem. <laughs> but, but we have these abilities. We're not dumb. God made us with capacities. We, we know how to feel, right? We know how to think. We know how to strategize. We know how to set goals. We're not stupid. But yet he says, trust God with all our heart. Lean out into our own understanding. And acknowledge him. Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there's a way that seems right to man, but in the end of the way is death. Yes, we have abilities. Yes, we have ability to plan, but we still need to acknowledge God. Because as humans, we have blind spots. Somebody say blind spots. We all have them. I don't care what, we, what our title is, whether we're a pastor, whether we're a bishop. Well, I don't care if you're 80 years old or 8 years old. We all have blind spots. We have theological blind spots. So we don't, everybody doesn't have a lock on who God is. Your denomination doesn't have a lock on, on, on who God is. And the way you do it is the only way to do it. And everybody else is wrong. We have blind spots. We're all getting to know God better each and every day. We have blind spots. There's stuff we don't see. We have ethnic and racial blind spots. And we, we realize that even in our own nation as we grow. You know, we, some of us grew up in areas where there weren't people that were different than us. We, we don't know what we're not, we don't know. We don't know what it's like to live in somebody who, who may have been poor. Sometimes we don't know what it's like to live with somebody who's been rich. We, we don't know. We think we know. We act like we know. But we have blind spots. And, and we don't realize that sometimes. And even our own self-awareness, we, we struggle with that at times. I know Mark chapter 9. Uh, uh, the, the, um, why do I lose my train of thought? Come on, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> the rich young ruler, I'm sorry. The rich young ruler, and talk, the story of the rich young ruler, he, you know, he goes to Jesus and said, Lord, what must I do to have eternal life? And, and Jesus said, well, you need to do this. Well, I have done that, man. You need to do this. Well, I've done that. And he goes down the whole list. And Jesus said, well, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go sell everything. 
house, cars, PlayStation 5, all your clothes, red bottom shoes, <laughs> Gucci purses. What else you like? Boats? <laughs> what else you like? Fishing, fishing equipment? Hunting equipment? Come on, what else we like? SUVs? All of it. Just get rid of it. And sell all that and follow me. But he was good when Jesus did do this. He was good. But when Jesus brought a blind spot into his own life, that you're dependent upon all these things, you're married on all these things, that then he was sad, the Bible says. He went away because he didn't want to do that. And for some of us, we think we're in a place, but we don't really realize some of our own issues and some of our own dependencies that we have. That's why we can't trust, even though we're not stupid, we can't just depend on our own selves. We have to put our trust in God. This is what he's saying. And all of our ways to acknowledge him. Uh, This is a beautiful thing. I hope you're getting this today because I'm encouraged. It's a beautiful thing. We have to seek God in all of our ways. And I want to encourage you to be intentional as you seek God. As a church, we can't, and you're going to live on purpose, the purpose that God has for you. You can't be a reactionary person. We can't always react to what's happening in the world. All we do is we live, and then when something happens, then we say, oh, God. You ever been there? We don't pray, and then something happens. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you don't read your Bible, but then something happens. What's, what's the scripture say? What's the scripture say? <laughs> You're trying to find what the scripture said, but we never, we never open up the Bible any other time, but now we want to know what the scripture has to say. No, we, we have to seek God on purpose. Reminded of King David in, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, when, when after Ziklag and his family got taken from him, his wife and children were gone. All his stuff was gone. The men that they, they were fighting, all their, their stuff was gone. They were ready to stone David. But David said, get me the linen ephod. That linen and Nephi represents that he was going to put that on. That's what the priests went in before they went before the Lord. And that's why we got to be intentional. We got to say, give me that linen and Nephi. We got to say, I'm going before God. Early in the morning, we got to get up and go before God and, and acknowledge him and seek him with everything. When it's, when, before you take the job interview, seek God about the job interview. Before you move to a new school, seek God about the move to the new school. Before you even go on the first date, Seek God about this particular person in this particular situation. Before anything, before you move to a new church, seek God about that thing. Before you go into a ministry, seek God about that thing. I'm not trying to slow down your enrollment for people. Trust me. Come on, serve, y'all. But seek God about it in everything. Parenting moves. Seek God about it. Seek God. Acknowledge him in everything. Sometimes it seems simple. God, I got to talk to you about this. But God wants to know. He wants you to acknowledge him because we don't know it all. We don't have it all. We want to put our trust in God. God, I'm trusting you for this business thing. You know I need more income for my family. I'm trusting you with it. The money looks good. Yes, the money looks great. It could be a trap. It could be the worst decision you've ever made. But God knows. Seek him first. Don't get trapped and then call God later. You follow what I'm saying? He wants us to trust him in all of our ways, all of them. One thing I do is that you got to have a checklist. You know, you write a checklist for yourself. You know, just like on your job sometimes, you got to make sure that you got the proper sign-offs on your checklist. Make sure God has signed off on, on everything that you're doing. Make sure God has signed off that new relationship. Yep, God signed off on it. Yep, you're entering a new area of ministry. Yes, God signed off on it. Make sure that you acknowledge God. We have to do this as people. And it's a blessing. I don't know about you, but uh, I love having a God that's true north. <laughs> I love having a God that doesn't change. I love having a God that's all-powerful, that's all-knowing, and does not fail. Because no, how, no matter how disoriented I get, I know I can turn to God and he is true north. He, he's always the right direction. He's always the answer. He always has what we need. And it's a blessing that we have this privilege to call him our father. We have this privilege to even trust him. Oh, yeah, I hear you. Wait a minute. God, is this a good thing? <laughs> we, we, I, I think that's a beautiful thing because we can get the counsel of God, the wisdom of God, the favor of God, the understanding of God, because we have him as our true north. And as I wrap up today, 
I know this sounds like a lot. As Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean out on your own understanding. That's stuff for us to do. And all our ways to acknowledge him. That's stuff for us to do. But what does God do in this? He closes out by saying, and he shall direct our path. That's a beautiful thing because that, that word direct means to make smooth or to make straight. That when we put our trust in God, the Bible says that he'll, he'll make our, our path smooth and he'll make our path straight. That doesn't mean everything in life is going to be honky-dory. doesn't mean it's not going to take any, any, any work or any action or there won't be some adversary. But you know that when you trust God and you seek him and acknowledge him, that he's working to make the situation smooth so that his purpose can be fulfilled. That, that's good news to somebody today, that he's working stuff out. He's, he's changing hearts of people that you don't even know he's changing hearts in because you've acknowledged him. You've prayed about that thing. He's, he, he's moving people out of the way. That, that difficult boss, God is already starting to move them out the way because you've acknowledged him. God, I just wanted you to be glorified in this situation. And when we do that, he starts doing stuff. He's softening your spouse's heart when you don't even really realize it. He's, he's working on your children when they may be wayward. He's, he's doing some things. He's, he's setting up situations for favor for you because we acknowledge him. He's making the way straight. He's waking it smooth for us. And that's a beautiful thing. I don't have to work as hard. I can, I can breathe easily because I put my trust in the Lord. I know that God is working it out. I, I, I yield myself with humility before the Lord, and he's doing some wonderful things. As pastors, and you pray for Pastor Mark, uh, we don't know where we're going with this thing. <laughs> you know, we, I thought I was going to come out of this thing in September. I'm going right back, and we got masks, and we got all of these things. And I got a lot of pastor friends. Everybody's shaking their knees. What's happening? Are people coming back to church? You got all these empty seats, and do you invest in lights or not? Or do you do this? Who knows? Because you don't know what you're going to experience. But I encourage you, Pastor Mark, trust the Lord. Just like I would encourage everybody, else, trust God, seek him. He knows. He knows who he's drawing in. He knows what new neighbors are coming in the cor- around the corner. He knows all of that. He knows who's watching online. He knows. He knows what he's doing. And we can trust him. And the last thing here is, 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 is and this just blows me away, is that he says, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. And it's with the S, it's plural, not singular. And I know sometimes in life we, we're on a path. And you ever been on a path and you feel like, I know this path already? <laughs> I've been on this path. There's some limits on this path. And that's true. We, we come into limits on path. But it says paths. So sometimes God has a new path for us. <laughs> it's time for us to get off that, that, that path that we've been on and get on a new path because there's paths in life that we take. We don't always just stay on the same singular path, but he moves us and shifts us to new paths. And I'm excited about that because I don't have to be stuck in life. That when I trust God and acknowledge him, he directs me to where I need to go. Sometimes it's, yep, I got to jump on a new path and that's what I'm going to do. Or I'm going to shift because God knows. He directs our path. He's directing the traffic. And I know that I'll get to where I need to be, and I will be who I need to become when I'm trusting the Lord with all my heart. That's the message for us today as a church, that we've got to trust God through this difficult time. Put your faith in God. Don't even trust in your own self. It's not good enough. Trust the Lord. That will position you for purpose, and you will be all that God has created you to be. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word today, your word of wisdom, that we should trust you. And we repent, God, in areas of our life where we haven't been trusting you. Um, Forgive us, Lord. We've trusted ourselves. We trusted our bank accounts. We've trusted our degrees. We've trusted Oprah. We've trusted Dr. Phil. We've trusted all these other things, but we have not trusted you. Forgive us. And so today we renew our trust in you. We want to build this trust with you so that you can take us further as we position ourselves for the purpose that you have for us individually and corporately. And I thank you for Neighborhood Church that as they position themselves to want to be yielded to you, that you would do a great and mighty work through all the people listening online and here in person so that they would come together as a collective church to fulfill that purpose, but help them first and foremost to put their full trust in you. And we thank you, God. We honor you.
and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Just invite you to all to stand as we uh, close out our service in response and song. We're going to sing a hymn uh, called Be Thou My Vision. Um, I see this lyric as not only a cry and a plead for God to be our vision in all things, but also a declaration of rebellion. While we're tempted to have other things to be our vision. So those of you who are quietly rowdy this morning in your spirit, you have a song to sing. And that is, Be Thou My Vision, this cry, this rebellion against the temptation to succumb to what the pastor just mentioned, all of the things for us to see and follow in this world. Let's cry to him for us, him to be our vision.
Thank you, Pastor Antonio, for that good word. Thank you, Jason and Jenna, for leading us in worship this morning. Today, we are commissioning someone from our church who is relocating to Florida this week. And uh, this is Karen. Karen, just put your hand up. Uh, we had a conversation earlier. I promised her I would not make her come up front. But Karen is relocating to Florida this week, and I invite you, if you're comfortable, to extend a hand in her direction as we pray for her. God, thank you for Karen, for her life and for her story. Thank you for bringing her to Montgomery County just a couple years ago. Thank you for leading her to the meetup group, our crafting group on meetup that she came and participated in, where she met Elizabeth and Dana and others who loved her and invited her to worship here. Thank you that after some time of worshiping here and of reading the Bible daily with another. She decided to say a firm, clear, new yes to you. Thank you for all the ways she's grown and all the ways she's connected the dots in these last couple of years. And God, we pray for her and pray your blessing on her as she transitions, that her journey with you would continue, that she would continue uh, to grow into all the fullness that you have for her. God, we pray you'd guide her to the church family you have in mind to her, a place where she can be blessed and be a blessing. And we pray that beyond that, her life in the community, you guide her to the people and places where she can be blessed and be a blessing. And we pray our blessing on her in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for being with us today, both in person and online. God bless you, and we will see you soon.